See how tightly the girl is strapped down. He doesn't want her to get away. But her latest outfit, it's a nice one. The magician gives us another look at the girl, and for this, I'm grateful. That's what we were waiting for, a beautiful girl from head to toe. In this provocative position, and she's something. And here's a lingering shot of the girl. Here she is. Nice. This time, our magician summons one of his lovely assistants using his magical gestures. And boy, is she something. He then quickly places her in a trance before taking her hand and levitating her in mid-air. The assistant is clearly stunned as her provocative body floats high above the ground. You could say he swept her off her feet. To prove there are no cables, the magician runs his arms dangerously close to her body parts. It's a miracle. He now takes her hand once more, assuring her she is safe and bringing her back down to earth. What a stud. To complete this illusion, the magician uses a technology known as green screen. He asks the busty assistant to make her way atop a small box hidden underneath the green screen blanket. All she has to do is step up and act pretty. All glory to the magician once again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have something to confess. It's been me this entire time. The nostalgia that that voiceover brings me. Mass Magician was a very popular show. For those of you too young to know what it was, this magician by the name of Valentino, who later revealed himself in the final episode of The Mass Magician, spent years on national TV revealing stage illusions and close-up magic tricks to the masses. Myself as a magician felt a little bit conflicted with all of this at the time, as most magicians did as well. A lot of these tricks were pulled straight from some of these Vegas acts where they are now rendered completely useless by the illusionists. And some of these tricks can cost anywhere from like 50 to $100,000. So even the manufacturer of the tricks would stop selling them. Magicians got together and tried to sue Valentino for exposure and loss of profit on their end, ultimately lost in court. He had a hard time suing because illusions are not among the intellectual properties covered by copyright law, but stated magicians and designers of magic tricks haven't had to take those steps. A handshake has worked for several centuries. That's wrong, actually. Whoever the lawyer of that magician was needs to be fired. Magicians used to run to the patent office when they saw an illusion, even if it wasn't their own. And if they were the first one to patent this illusion, uh, they would then be able to sue anyone else using it. Now, because patent laws are public, here's an example of an illusion uh, that was patented, I think, by Howard Thurston back in the day. And there was a catch-22. If you wanted to patent these, you'd also have to reveal it to the masses. But it was a lot harder getting hold of patents back then as it is now on the internet. Today we're going to take a deep dive into Valentino or as he's more popularly known as the masked magician and his show on Fox. This is something as a child I used to watch a lot of. I was a fan of magic and although part of me was like oh my god he's revealing these tricks the child inside me and the child outside me <laughs> was literally happy that I got to learn free magic on TV. He said the main reason I did the program was to get magicians talking about the future of magic magical arts as the internet was about to change everything as it has. Magicians had become complacent, were not prepared for any changes that were to come. Programs seemed to be the place to shake things up and get magicians talking. Sure, I took some flack, but it was good, all for a good cause to get magicians talking. I'm gonna call bullshit on that. I think the reason he did it was money. <laughs> I think that's the reason most people do it. This guy was a successful Vegas performer and got pulled aside by producers at Fox. They negotiated him into doing this. And I guess I guess the same could be said about my content. Uh, me revealing things, you can say, man, it was for money. I'm not gonna lie and say, yeah, a part of it was. I gotta make a living too. But I also see where this guy's coming from and it does shake things up. And this guy knew the internet was about to happen. And so the, he was a visionary in my opinion don't forget like subscribe and we got uh we got new merch at first.shop which is my shop first.shop check it out currently sitting at 1.5 million subscribers so this guy's and he uploads every thursday if you're watching this valentino please don't flag this video for copyright i'm sending people to your channel fair use 
a medieval torture device. Man, that the voice. The is quite proud of this antique apparatus. And why wouldn't he be? It's an egg-shaped cage made of forged bands of iron. Dude, this voiceover brings back so much nostalgia. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm like, I remember staying up at night and catching this on Fox. This is such a Fox show, by the way, also. NBC has performing magic, Fox has revealing magic, 1000%. It's empty now, but knowing the magician, this cage won't be empty for long. He calls in two of his assistants who come bearing a small rack. Ah, we'll let that one slide. <laughs> Funny thing you gotta know about this narrator, there's always innuendo involved. There's always like a little bit of misogyny. There was uh, on TV, there was a healthy dose of misogyny back then. I mean, that's just kind of like the way TV was back then. It's a bit cringe now, but looking back at it, you know, we can, we can comment on it. One thing I have to say is that the assistants do so much more than the magician. Let's have a look. Dude, this music, the lighting, the warehouse, ugh. They lift the cage from its heavy duty mount. <laughs> Can we just appreciate Valentino in the back here just doing this? Watch him. Look, he's like, put that there. Like he's floating it. <laughs> they lift the cage from its heavy duty Man, mount. Man, magicians are so useless sometimes. Look at this. He's done, he's done nothing. Place it down on the rack. <laughs> oh, never mind. With the front half of the cage removed, <laughs> we can see how something or someone can be placed inside. Dude, these are wild. Here's someone now. Oh, he's summoning her. Here's something. <laughs> Sorry, once again. Here's someone now, and she's something. How horny this narrator is always makes me laugh. I mean, Fox knows who their the demographic is. The position Let's be inside honest. The back half of the cage and it looks like there is barely enough room for her to make the tight squeeze. He's done nothing, dude. He just keeps doing this. Now two male assistants enter. As she steadies herself... Hey, they why aren't they shirtless? Huh? For your female demographic out there, and some guys, you should probably, you know, have them all oiled up, bringing out props. They replace the front of the cage, trapping her inside. <laughs> Look at him, just... <laughs> I love this so much. This is a good looking The male assistants lift the cage trick. and place it into the heavy mount, along with its beautiful cargo. <laughs> what happens next is anyone's guess. Notice how much this guy's doing, dude. Or how little, rather. Like, there's not much the going on. The removes the steel pins again and opens the clasps. His other assistants now cover the sections of the cage What was the point of putting of in the steel? Canvas. If you're just going to remove to oh, to lift the her fabric tightly around the cage and no place for a lovely lady to spend an evening alone. Hey, here we go. The magic's about to happen. The magician Watch his hands. For another assistant. Another assistant? That's seven. This one comes bearing a razor sharp crosscut saw. Just when you thought this device couldn't get any more torturous. The assistant's doing such a good job right now, the by the way. The magician steps behind the cage and you got it. He begins to saw between the two halves, and presumably, the girl. This is a great illusion, by the way. This just isn't her day. <laughs> just isn't her day. You know Penn and Teller would have had some she blood... She looked like a tough cookie. <laughs> she looked like a tough cookie. Penn and Teller would have had blood spewing out of that thing. I find this illusion to be a little bit weird, sorry for pausing, but uh, because you can't see the other side of the blade on the other side, I find it to be a little bit weird, and... Uh, but you get the point. You'll see how it's done, you'll be like, oh, that's cool. He's made it all the way through and removes the saw. Again, blood would have been. It's Fox that maybe they're. One takes the saw as the others remove the canvas. And there's the beautiful girl in the iron cage. Unharmed. And once the cage is in its mount, the girl has plenty of room to roll over onto her back. In this position, she's able to slide some of the middle straps away, allowing her to drop down out of the bottom. As he saws, the magician uses his skills as a mime to make it look like he's struggling to cut through flesh and bone. There's an actual reality, saw there. The girl has rotated onto her back, slipped out of the secret metal bands, and lowered herself safely below the path of the saw. Look you get to see it a little bit more canvas. here. So she goes here, she slides it forward. If that thing gets stuck, by the way, not a good time for her. So there is some risk involved. See, there are two sections that her have been to secretly slide away and give her enough room to slip down. In this provocative position, 
She's in no danger of being touched by- Was that really necessary to call it a provocative position? Provocative, arousing sexual desire or interest, especially deliberately. In no way was she deliberately being provocative here, other than she had to move out of the way of the saw that was going to cut her. This is my magician appreciation video, but not for the mass magician. Obviously what he did uh, lives in infamy and we can't deny that. However, these aren't assistants. These are magicians. The term assistant is a little bit derogatory when talking about uh, female magicians. And, and often I have a lot of female magician friends and uh, when they tell people they're magicians, some people are like, oh, like an assistant? And it's pretty derogatory and you can see why. I think nowadays women are like Valentino in this case, they are the presenter. However, there are still some acts that use uh, women or men as assistants, but they're not called assistants. They're called, it's a duo. It's, uh, they're magicians. And that's how that's done. She climbs out. It's all good. I really love this YouTube channel, by the way. Go subscribe, I left the link below. I'm not mad at this. I like this a lot. It's been on national this TV. This corrugated metal enclosure will be the site of the magician's first illusion tonight. As we can see, the enclosure is completely empty and free from magical gimmicks. When straps are securely attached to something, you know they'll be securely strapping someone. And here's that special someone now. The magician's beautiful assistant. She steps up onto the panel so that we can get a better look at her latest outfit. It's a nice one. Oh my Next, god! She gets down. The magician calls in two male assistants to help him. Apparently, she's more than he can handle. The assistants strap the girl to the panel, just as I suspected. At least she's dressed for it. What does that even mean? How can you not be dressed for it? What's an occasion like that call for? For. What kind of outfit do you need to be strapped to a table? The magician checks the strap and does some conjuring while he's at it. <laughs> Is that what they call it? <laughs> he calls in two more assistants and the four men lift the panel and carry it into the metal enclosure. All right. They position the panel within the empty steel frame and lock it in place. That's cool. I like the way this looks right now. You this... can see how tightly the girl is strapped down. He doesn't want her to get away. What? <laughs> the magician gives us another look at the girl, and for this, I'm grateful. Dude, this guy's too much. This guy's a lot. I could, I could just picture in the writing room being like, yeah, but we need to spice it up a little. Let's add something like this. The magician gives us another look at the girl, and for this, I'm grateful. <laughs> He conjures a cloud of smoke, a flash, she's gone. The girl and the steel panel have vanished in an instant. That is a super cool illusion, by the way, because not only is she gone, the panel is apparently transparent and she, like the tables vanished with her. So not only her, because as a spectator, you're thinking, oh, they rotated the table and she's on the back but now you can sort of see through the table. So that goes out the window. That method is struck from your memory. However, keep oh, watching. Where did she go? The first secret is in the sheet metal enclosure. Concealed in the back so wall smart. is a secret panel behind which is a stagehand. We'll learn more about his role later. Next, the panel is moved to the metal framework inside the enclosure. First off, the straps are real and it's critical to the girl's safety that they are securely fastened. When the assistants are securing the panel to the frame, what you don't notice is that they're releasing secret latches positioned in the corners of the frame. See? During the performance, the magician appears to conjure a puff of smoke and an explosion, and the girl is gone. It looks so good. But where did she go? Remember the stage hand hidden behind this secret panel? At the precise moment the explosion goes off, the stagehand opens his window. Check this and releases out. This is a lever on the frame that rotates the panel and the girl, concealing her from view. Now she is being supported by the padded That is insane. Which protect her from falling to the floor below. The reflection is showing the reflection at the top, and it lines up perfectly. That's just some good old engineering. Shout out to all you illusion makers out there. Uh, you guys are doing some great work because that is a great illusion. And the way that gravity helps turn it, so you don't actually have to physically turn it, makes it very hands off. The entire mechanism is designed so that this one tiny lever is all the stagehand needs to release in order to make the entire panel flip and conceal the girl. So that's a cool one. I really like that one, actually. Three lovely ladies magically appear. Next, 
The magician has an illusion for us involving this empty pedestal. As we can see, there's nothing behind, above, or below. For some reason, these tricks are always more interesting when the female assistants are around. Well, we'll have to make do with what we have here. <laughs> Unless the magician can help out with a little magic, he invites his male assistants to raise a large sheet on top of the pedestal. A few of those famous magical gestures, and he commands the sheet to be lowered. Presto! That's what we were waiting for. A beautiful girl from head to toe. That's one sure way to brighten up a warehouse. What is this? Just a bunch of horny dudes in a warehouse be like, mm, how can we conjure up some ladies? Am I right, boys? <laughs> Who's got a pedestal? The sheet goes back up. Maybe he's trying for number two. It's a good We're illusion. To find out if he has the magic touch. He does. This trick is a real crowd pleaser. And here's a lingering shot of the girl, just to prove she's real. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was uncalled for. He's good, but he's not that good. The sheet goes back up. Now let's see if the third time is the charm. Some more magical gestures are in order. And there she is. The third time is the charm. And the charming. This is what happens when you put women on a pedestal. Okay, that was an okay joke. That joke was okay. I'll get an that one. Beneath the stage, a small army of men are operating some complex equipment to pull off this elaborate trick. The second the sheet is raised, the backstage team goes into action. This man-powered elevator sends the woman up through a shaft to the top of the pedestal. I gotta be honest. I was like, how do they fit three women into that tiny little pedestal? but the pedestal appears to be very narrow. It contains yet another secret. A concealed stagehand releases a mechanism which expands the pedestal and allows the girls to squeeze ah, through. That's cool. Check out that profile. Oh my. From the front, the pedestal appears circular, but from the side- That's a cool illusion. See how it expands to three times its width. Very good. As the first girl is being lifted off of the pedestal, Beneath the stage, the second girl is stepping into the cramped elevator. Two burly stagehands grab hold of the steel cable and lie backward onto the floor. All right, so we know how it's done. How are you guys liking this so far? I'm enjoying this. This is fun. For live performances all over the world. Here he comes. His assistants do a little dance to get us <laughs> Here he comes. Careful. Good job. Careful, ladies. But no matter how talented they are, he can always use one more. Here she is. Nice. <laughs> this guy's killing me. She steps up onto the chair and reclines on a board that is resting between two other chairs. Now another assistant enters. This one is apparently repossessing the furniture. The magician places the girl in a trance as his other assistants wrap her in a sheet that was hanging down from the board. He placed her in a trance. Very important that he does uh, the trance part. Nighty night. Nighty night. Beneath the board, we can see that the magician is standing on a raised platform so we can see him work his magic. He rises. Dude, that looks so cool. The assistants remove the chairs that were supporting the board. Slowly, the girl continues to rise. That looks so cool. Watch this. Watch, 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 watch. The magician watch. passes the hoop around the girl once to prove that there are no wires. How good is that? She's really floating in the air by magic. How he good is that? the hoop around her a second time, just to be sure before the assistant takes it away. That convincer of the ring is so good. This is a, if you saw this in real this life. This is amazing. Yeah, this is. see there are no wires. Yeah, there are no wires. It is amazing. See, I've seen this illusion in real life and it is incredibly beautiful. The sheet is removed and there you have it. A beautiful girl who can levitate by magic. Without the sheet, we can see the mechanism supporting the board and the girl. Mm -hmm. His body hides the mechanism from view. But how does he make her rise? We did a similar trick to this in our TV show, Big Trick Energy, uh, where I my whole body had to basically block the pole that was suspending and levitating uh, my buddy. So we're familiar with that, and it's crazy what you can get away with by just you know hiding in plain sight like that. The platform contains the next secret. Concealed inside is an electric motor 
that is connected to a hydraulic piston powerful enough to support the girl. The platform's carpeted top contains the next secret. Two switches are hidden beneath the black carpet. When the magician appears to be conjuring the power to levitate the girl, he's simply turning on the power to the motor. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how simple so much magic is. Some people are out there who probably ended up starting a religion after seeing this guy perform before he revealed these tricks. And then once he revealed, it's like, oh, he just pressed his foot down. He just went like this. That's what he did. Which That's all he did. The hydraulic piston to rise. This part. With the board attached to the mechanism, how does the magician make it appear that it's unsupported by passing the solid hoop around the girl not once, but twice? It's so good. The secret here is the design of the steel mechanism. So simple. This S-shaped metal tube is connected to the board. When he comes to the end, he slides the part of the ring that is trapped inside the S back around the other side. It's like a tiny puzzle. Part of me enjoys this because this is like puzzle building. You have a problem and they solve it using a puzzle rather than you have a puzzle and you need to find the solution. They're like, hey, uh, we have what we want it to be, but we need to build a puzzle. Uh, and that's really fascinating with magic. All right, one more, one more here, one more. Vanishing illusion right out of Harry Potter. Okay. <laughs> Look at the title of this one. Voluptuous Vixen Vanishes. <laughs> These sound like Pornhub titles. Mature Neighbor Vanishes. <laughs> Voluptuous Assistant Gets Stuck in Couch. All right. Tonight's first illusion demonstrates the magician's power to convince the audience he can make his assistants come and go at will. So far, he's delivered on half of his promise. Oh, to make them go. At his I request, see. they cover this ordinary table with a large sheet. I feel like this is going to be a trick where, again, the girls do everything. Using a chair, the magician steps up onto the table. Oh, sorry, I forgot to. Not everything. To join him on the tabletop. This guy's got the magic touch. One of the assistants Terrible hands him the chair, which he places in the center of the table. He then orders the girl to sit down in the chair, and he quickly places her under his spell. The other assistants return with yet another sheet. The magician tells us to watch as he lifts the sheet in front of the girl. Again, we can see that there is nothing below the table. But now, we can't see the girl. He whisks away the sheet. Very well done. The other assistants help him remove the chair, and we can see that she's really gone. This is one vanish that is going to be difficult to explain. Now, they remove the sheet from the tabletop. All right. the, table. the table is a small platform containing steel rollers. Didn't see that coming. When the sheet is placed on the table, it conceals the platform from view. We can still see it from the back. When the magician raises the sheet in front of the girl, she secretly gets up from the chair and climbs down onto the platform. This is where she hides while he whisks away the sheet. But why the steel rollers? The magician hands the sheet and chair to his assistants and draws our attention to the empty tabletop. Meanwhile, the girl is sliding across the steel ah. rollers to another hiding place behind the chair. She does the everything. She blocks the audience view of the girl as she takes her position, but her work isn't finished yet. The chair conceals another secret, a hidden platform. Into the back of the chair and climbs on board. The girl simply goes now. She gets whisked away in the chair. Dude, that magician was insane. She had to get out of view without being spotted, lay down, roll off the thing, coordinate with him, go behind the curtain, uh, grab the thing from inside the chair, g climb inside the chair. That's insane. That's a lot of work. Props to you. This is been so much fun. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps up uh, today's video. I had so much fun watching this. This was a trip down memory lane for myself as a young magician. I remember watching these and being so impressed and I, I really want to watch more of them. If you guys are into it, let me know, please, by liking, subscribing, commenting, uh, say you want another one. Uh, we can look into maybe some close-up magic that he reveals and, and you know, uh, pick that apart. But whatever you guys are into, I really enjoy this. Uh, shout out to the masked magician, Valentino. Go check out his channel uh, unless he flags this video. And if he flags the video, then I'm going to be very sour. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.